So, Vesiata Tishmai, we're here in the Al Shech Academy on a beautiful Monday. And I know on the schedule is written that we're going to learn, learn the Yam Der Kecha. But in truth, we are going to learn the Kote Alachot. We're going to learn the Kote Alachot. Why are we going to learn the Kote Alachot? Because I didn't have the Yam Der Kecha with me. Oh. <laughs> and also, not only that, that if I was going to teach the Yam Der Kecha, Baruch Hashem, we did it last year on the three weeks. There's three amazing classes there to learn, to prepare for the three weeks. So whoever is interested in that, go into the Eliyahu Pereira playlist on the Al Shech Academy channel and scroll down and you'll see there, and we can send it out maybe in the group during this, during this period, three classes on what is the Shekhinah, how to connect to the Shekhinah, and preparing towards Tisha B'Av. So I figured we'll learn Likut Al-Achot, and one thing specifically we'll learn in Likut Al-Achot, which is the Al-Achot of the Beit Knesset, of the synagogue. One of the most important books that we have is the Kutel Achot. People don't know this. Rabbi Nathan's goal was to take Shulchan Aruch and to take the Kutel Moran, Rabbi Nachman's teachings, and to fuse them together so that every halacha would be illuminated with the secrets behind it. Why, why Bet, Bet can I said the Kutel Achot is a huge series of books? Why am I choosing to focus on this? Because you'll see in the first lesson that our synagogues are our Bitei Knesset are our temples. As long as we don't have a temple, and even if we were to have a temple, we still need each of one of us that doesn't live in Jerusalem, we need a place to pray, and a place to connect to Hashem, and that is the synagogue. <coughs> it's the Migdash Me'at, as the rabbis call, as the Chazal calls it, the, the small Migdash, the so, small sanctuary to serve Hashem there. So in this time where we're going into a period of mourning the destruction of our temple, was more fitting to find out a little bit more about the temple that we step into every single day, the Beit Knesset that we step into every day. So the Halakha, he goes according um, to a teaching that was given in Likutei Moran, and we'll start with that. Likutei Moran 181, Kuf Pei Aleph. Rabbi Nachman says like this, Kshemitkashrim bekesher eza anashim al ish echad afilu imu adam chashuv v'yoter mehem. When a bunch of people come together and conspire and they want to come against a person, even if he's a bigger person than them, even if that person is greater by himself than the whole entire group, the group, if they come together to bring him down, they'll bring him down. When they come together as a group to oppose this other person, what's really happening? The pieces of what's called their kavod, their honor, as who they are as a human being, their honor is coming together and they're making a group. And by way of that, the chelek kavod, the part of honor, the part, the part of respect, the part of, of importance, of kavod in the other person is nullified. Meaning you got a group of people together, all of their respect and stature as a human being comes together and that is what breaks down the honor of the other person. Shakatnut batel ifnei gadlut. Right? The, the, the smallness is nullified in front of the greatness. The parts of honor, of kavod, inside each one of them came together and became a unified part of kavod. Now it's bigger than the person that they're trying to oppose. But if that person is a big, big person, to the point that his kavod alone outweighs the group's kavod that's coming against him, that Adarabba, they are nullified into him. Meaning, you have a bunch of people come together, to, collectively they have a certain level of respect, a, little, a certain level of honor. They come to oppose a person. If their honor outweighs that individual by himself, they take him down off of his level. But if he and by himself outweighs the whole entire group, they now get nullified and they get included into his light. They give in, so to say, to him. Even if everyone is smaller than him. But they can't be wicked people to do this. It can't be a bunch of Rishayim that go against Torah, they want to come together and they want to take down a tzaddik. It's not going to work. Why? Because Rishayim together in a group are not counted as a minion. The collective merit doesn't uh, add up? Why? Because we have a rule from Masechet Sanhedrin on the 26th page. Ki Rishayim en lem chilek bekavod aval im. They don't have Ki keshe Rishayim eno mina minyan. A connection between Rishayim is not counted. It's not a real minyan. Take 10 Jews together and 10 Rishayim. They do not count as 10 as a group. They are 10 individuals. The 10 tzaddikim, the 10 righteous people, the 10 holy people, they become one person. You know, 10 Rishayim, they can still... 
ten rishayim halachically it's a minion. And even then, you want to get into the pinimut of the halacha. It's a tzibur. It's called a tzibur. Tzibur is tzadik benoni rishayim. You have to have a rasha in your in your tzibur anyway. And if the whole tzibur is a tzibur rishayim, so then okay, it's a tzibur rishayim. But even in then, there will still be broken down into who's the righteous out of them and who is still the shalich tzibur, right? But Halachically, I mean, uh, on a deeper sense, not when it coming talking about uh, about tefillah, you want to make now a group, a census. You have ten wicked people; they are counted as ten individuals. They're not a group. You have ten righteous people; the ten together become one entity. That's the Indian here. The ten will stay ten individuals. The ten righteous people become one being. They become one. <laughs> If he's not a rasha, then he has a part of his nefesh, he has vitality in his nefesh, in his soul, his vital soul, and he has kavod, then that kavod cannot join with other people's kavod, and by way of that connection you can break down a person. This was Yaakov's tefillah, Yaakov already had in Ruach HaKodesh, he saw that Korach was going to come against Moshe. And he prayed that that machloket wouldn't affect Moshe Rabbeinu. Why? With 250 tzaddikim. They weren't mm-hmm. wicked people. They were tzaddikim. Moshe by himself alone was higher than everybody. Right? Bichla, the tzaddik of the door of the Moshiach, he has all the souls inside of him. Right? When they come together as a kahal, when they come together as a group, al techad kevodi. Don't let it affect my honor, Yaakov Avinu. Right? Don't ruin my name because one of my sons is now going to come against the tzaddik. So they shouldn't come together. They shouldn't make a kesher. The parts of their kavod shouldn't come together. Every single one of them. Ki emayu kurei moed and sheishem chashuvim. They knew how to establish holidays. They knew the names of Hashem. They were important people. Shelo yitiachet v'itkasher chilkei kavod shalem bevaday yuchal Moshe la'amod negdam la'apilam. If it won't be if ya- Yaakov's tefillah was make sure that their parts of kavod don't come together because Moshe is big enough that if they don't manage to make the yichud Moshe will break them down by himself <coughs> meaning if they were able to really come together as one they would have broken down Moshe because they were tzaddikim Korach was the head of the Sanhedrin we, bl- we put all the blame on him he was the head he was the biggest out of all of them so imagine what the rest were together you get me? it's 250 holy holy people why does it say kavodi? Why is Yaakov worried about his honor? Because Yaakov is this idea of kavod. Because Yaakov is this aspect of nefesh. Like it's written, kol ha-nefesh ha-ba'al beit Yaakov. All the nefesh that is coming to the house of... The house of Yaakov. And when you, drop, when you bring down a person... The main way that he's brought down is by way of niuf. He falls into promiscuity, sexual promiscuity. That's when, he, when a person falls, that's where he falls to. Up until here is the teaching of the Quran that Rabbi Natan tells us to go into before we get into the into the to the Likut Alachot. And now he goes like this: Ki beta tefila nika beta Knesset. The house of prayer. What do we call it? A beit Knesset. What is simply? What do those words mean? Beit. Bayit is a house. Knesset means assembly. Mm-hmm. Assembly, an in-gathering. Al-shesham mitkansin kol ha-nefashot al yedei ha-tefila she mitpalilim shama. Why is it called a bet Knesset? Because it is the house, the place, the building, where all of the nefashot, nefesh, all the nefesh, right, that we talked about Yaakov, they come together and they assembly there in the place that they pray. Again, tefillah in Hebrew is not prayer like we say in English. Prayer in English, excuse me, prayer in English means I need something, I ask you for it. I ask for it. Right? In Hebrew, tefillah is like tefillin. It's a connection. It's me as a creation connecting to my creator. It's not about asking for things. One part of tefillah is asking for things. But it's not about that. Really, it's about connecting to my source. Tefillah is this aspect of nefesh. Again, we have three levels of our soul, nefesh, ruach, and neshama. Our nefesh is 
our lowest part is the body's vitality, right? It's the honor of the person, as we're going to see here. It's the blood that flows through his veins. What makes him a living being, right? Kamosha Katav Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman writes in Torah 46 that this aspect of tefillah is nefesh. Therefore, tefillah in the Beit Knesset, Beit Tzibur. Therefore, your tefillah has to be in the place of a Beit Knesset, in the place of a Tzibur, of a, of a public domain. Ki ikar aliyat ha-nefesh u shlemuta u al u shekenichlelin kol ha-nefashot v'nasin echad. What is the main way to ascend your soul, to have a soul elevation and to complete your soul? When is your soul complete? When all of the souls come together and the nefashot na'asin echad. The many different souls become one. Ki azolim ala kedusha. Only then do the souls really ascend to kedusha, to sanctity. Ki ha-kedusha u echad. What is kedusha? Kedusha is oneness. Right? Lack of Kiddusha means I want from this pot, I want from that pot, I want from that pot, I want the girl, I want the food, I want this. I, want, I don't have boundaries, I don't have the limitation of oneness. Kiddusha means even when I eat, even when I'm with my wife, even when I'm working, it's Kadosh. I'm, 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 I'm in oneness, I'm tapping into the light of the Creator when I do these actions. Like Rashi says, Al shivim nefeshot beit Yisrael, shikulam nikraim nefesh echad. Right? There are 70 souls in the house of Yaakov. What does Rashi say? One soul. They're one per, they're one being. Nefesh echad. Nachon. Nachon. Kol nefesh aba the Beit Yaakov, right? Ve'alken atfila shu b'chinat nefesh. Therefore, prayer, which is this aspect of nefesh, ikara taluik she nitachin nitachin nefashot. The main aspect of the tefila is when the souls unify and the souls come together. Alken tzrich lekabel alav kodem atfila mitzvat asev ve'ahavta rechel amocha. It was instituted by our mayor, Marino ve'Rabenu. Adonenu Moreno Verabenu Rabbi Yitzchak. Right? Hashem Dariza, what's on his matzeva? What's on his kever? And he instituted that we have to say this before we start shacharit. Before you start shacharit, you have to take upon yourself of, I am loving my fellow as myself, meaning I am including my soul with his soul. I'm unifying with my brother. Like Rabbeinu writes, Rabbi Nachman writes in Torah 239, You're not able to really pray. You're not even allowed to say the words of prayer. I mean, you can't really do it. You could say it, but it's not going to do much. If you don't have the, the peace, if you don't have shalom, if you don't have connection between all of the souls of Israel. Therefore, the main aspect of prayer has to come in a public domain and not by yourself. It shouldn't be that everybody is separate and individual because that's the complete opposite of Kadosh, of Kedusha, of sanctity. We have to bring the holy congregation, the holy people of Israel together and then you have Kedusha, the Eida Kedusha, and you become one. This is what it means to pray specifically in a, in a public setting in the synagogue, in the Beit Knesset. Because that's the place where all of the souls assemble and get unified. And this is the whole package of what's called tefillah. And therefore, synagogues, Beit Knesset, are called in the name of Yaakov. And this is, we see here, this is Torah Lishma. Like the Satma Rebbe say, when you see something connected to what's going on in life, it's Torah Lishma. So we have here, last week's parasha, Parashat Balak. Ma tovu alecha Yaakov. How great are your tents, Yaakov. Ki Yaakov u klaliut kol nefashot. Yaakov is this all-encompassing idea of all of the souls together, of Israel, which is the aspect of kol ha-nefesh, one nefesh, kol ha-nefesh, that is coming to the house of Yaakov. Every single ten of, of the ten of the minion, or the thirty or forty, however many people you have in your shul, and they come together to this place, which is a place of itkansu, the place of assembly of the souls, where they can unify, they're already called the nefesh. They're coming to Beit Yaakov, they're coming to the shul. It's one soul that's coming. Like Rabbeinu writes there, in this Torah that we started with, Kuf Pei Aleph, 181, which, that's the aspect of Yaakov. Because all of the nefashot and ba'achdut, they're unified. Like Rashi says about the 70 nefesh, shivim nefesh, not shivim nefashot. 
But the aspect of Abraham and Yitzchak, that they had come out of them, Ishmael and Esav, which is the aspect of Perud, of multiplicity, of separateness, they are called Nefashot, in the plural. Like Rashi says there, Avram Karo Har. Avram calls it a mountain, the place of Harabayit, right? Yitzchak calls it a Sadeh, a field. These are not places that are Mukaf Mechitzot. שאינו מקום משהו מוקף מחיצות ואין שם כניסה והתוודות והתחברות יחד It's an open place A mountain's an open place A field's an open place It's not a place of gathering There's no walls there There's no limitation that allows you to unify אבל יעקב ששם מבחינת האחדות But Yaakov who has the aspect of oneness of, of, of unity Therefore he's the one that called that same location the bite He called it a bite He called it a house Which is a house is a place of התוודות of coming together, of itchabrut, of, of unification. Shekola nefashot mitkansinu mitchabrim lamakom echad. All the souls, they come and they gather and they unify themselves in one place. Not in a field that is many places, not in an open place. No, a place that has walls, that has a roof, that is limited. In that small, limited space, all the souls come as, as one. And this is the aspect of Beit Knesset. Shub khrat Beit Yaakov. Khrat Beit Tfilah. The house of Yaakov, the house of Tfilah. And that's only by way of the aspect of Yaakov. Ki abete knesiyot hem b'chinat Beit HaMikdash. Shul's synagogues are the aspect of the Beit HaMikdash, of the temple in Yerushalayim. Like it's written in Yechizkel, the 11th chapter, Ve'ehi lehem lemikdash me'at. I will be for them a mikdash me'at, a small, a miniature uh, temple. Therefore, specifically, we have to pray inside a bit Knesset, because that's the main completion of tefillah, which is the aspect of a house. Therefore, everybody, it's written in Shulchan Aruch, it's from the Rambam, Siman Kuf Nun Alef 151 in Shulchan Aruch, that the people of the city are allowed to force the other people in the city to build a shul. Even if they're the minority of the city, they're allowed to force the majority, the majority to build a shul. Since it's the aspect of oneness, of unity, therefore everyone is able to force his friend. Like one person could command a certain body part of his to do something, right? Your brain tells your arm to move. So too here. If it's for the benefit, if it's for good, my hand doesn't know what my head knows I need. My hand doesn't have the same consciousness. Meaning here, in, in, in our practical case here, these guys need a shul to pray in. Those ones don't need a shul to pray in. They even have their own shul. But it's too far for those other ones. Allah Khan says they can force them to build a shul. This, that shul is not accessible. They can force you to build another one that we have. Even though my hand doesn't know what's going on in my head, my hand, so to say, has a sense, has a feeling of it, and it wants to save my head. This part of the community has to feel the pain of the other side of the community and want to save them. So if I want to build a shul, I'm unified with my friend because I'm trying to build a place of unity, I can force him to help him, to help me. I can, I can push him in a way that he has to help me, whatever this means spiritually. Therefore, shuls, we have to act differently inside them. It's not a regular house, it's not a sports bar. It's not a social gathering, it's purely a social gathering. It is a social gathering, but in Kedusha, we have to act in Kavod. Kavod is nefesh. Tefillah is nefesh. Besodam al tavo nafshi b'ka'alam al techad kevodi. The same pasuk that we had before when Yaakov Avinu prayed that, that, that Korach and his Eda wouldn't be able to, to bring down Moshe Rabbeinu. This is what the rabbi said in, in Masechet Brachot. En mechabdim ele bapetach sheyesh ba mezuzah. You can only honor a person in an opening of a building that has a mezuzah. Ki mezuzah u b'chinat malchut. Mezuzah is an aspect of malchut, of kingship, of honor. Melech kavod, the king of honor, u b'chinat nefesh, which is the aspect of the soul, the nefesh. This is what Rabbi Nachman wrote in Torah 23, the mezuzah is the aspect of ashirut kedusha. Mezuzah is the aspect of holy wealth. Zuz, zuz is another, zuzay, right, is the way that the Chazal calls money, 
Why? Because they move from one to the other. So to the mezuzah is the holy wealth. It's connected to the breed. It's connected to all the wealth that you have. Because ashihut, wealth, is the source, is the root of all of the souls. Like Rabbi Nachman writes in a different place in 68. ashirim. Therefore, Rabbi, Rabbi Yudha Nasi, he would honor rich people. He was very rich himself. He knew to honor the others that were rich. Mechabed, he would specifically with kavod. He didn't say other words. There's other words they could have worded. Use the word kavod, mechabed, specifically. Because ashirut is the root of all of the souls. This is the aspect of kavod. This is osher v'chavod. Right? Wealth and honor. Alken, ein rawi lechabed, ki im bepetach sheesh bo mezuzah. Therefore, you should only give honor and an opening that has a mezuzah. Ki shamu makom kavod, because the mezuzah is kavod, it's a shirut, it's the, source, it's the source of all the souls. So if you want to honor a soul, which the soul is honor itself, do it in an opening that has a mezuzah. Alken, Therefore, in the opening, you have to, at the opening, you have to honor everybody. Maybe we could take this, that when you open a relationship, at the beginning of a relationship, you have to honor everybody. You have to honor them from the source of where they came from. In order to illuminate unto the soul from its source, which is kavod. Like Rabbi Nachman writes in a different place, right? It's order 37. And with this, we're finished. In the Beit Knesset, you don't need a mezuzah in a Beit Knesset. We do it, but you don't need it, right? Even in a Beit Knesset where you don't have a mezuzah, you could give honor in that opening. Because it's a place of kavod. It's the house of Yaakov. Kavod is Yaakov. Nefesh is Yaakov. Besodam, nafshi bika'alam, kavodi, kemosha katuf rabbeno. Like Rabbi Nachman wrote, Therefore, in a shul, you have to have extra respect, extra honor. Why? Why is a shul, you have to have extra honor in a shul when you're there? To, to the way you sit differently, the way you... Everything has to be different in a shul. Why? By way of you having honor for the shul, you will arouse a supernal level of honor which is the root of all of the souls that are coming to unify themselves and to ascend towards holiness in Shemaim. There are souls, when we come in a minion together in a shul, our souls ascend. How do we speed up that process? You acting with honor inside the shul, proper clothing, proper manners, proper everything. You arouse this energy of kavod. The souls that are rooted in kavod start to get aroused. They unify faster, they ascend faster, they get their tikkun faster, they come back down with mochin better. That's Mizat Hashem, our first halacha that we're learning in the Chod Beit Knesset. Mizat Hashem, we'll continue with halacha next time. Mizat Hashem, a little change of.